Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to look at how you can get into 3D art with a rubbish computer. So within this video I'll be talking about the things in 3D that take a lot of power and what to steer clear of and what you should be focusing on to improve your skills. Do make sure you check out the links in the description and the playlist on my channel if you want to learn more about the things that I talk about in this video. You can also go to my website as well which has all my courses in order from beginner to advanced. So first of all, the most important thing in my opinion is to make sure you get a three button mouse. It is possible with a two button mouse or some other device, but it's such a pain without it. So do make sure you've got a three button mouse. They're very cheap, so I think you can probably splash out to that one. So things in 3D that cost a lot of power or take a lot of processing power from your computer are going to be things like complex lighting with volumetrics or that smoky effect, things like particle systems, grass, smoke, explosions, high poly objects, so detailed sculpts or heavily subdivided objects, and stacking up lots of modifiers on top of each other. So first of all, high poly objects. If you're using the subdivision surface modifier, then that instantly takes your face count and times it by four. And then another four on top of that, if you subdivide it twice and so on. Now this is a common technique within hard surface modeling to make your objects look more realistic. And also within hard surface modeling techniques is using booleans, so cutting out of those objects with separate objects, as well as subdividing. And this is very expensive for computers especially if you start stacking the modifiers on top of each other. It's something Blender's very good at, but it does take processing power. So it may be some of the hard surface modeling techniques that we see in mech designs, detailed weaponry and so forth, you're going to have to avoid and think of simpler solutions. And I'll talk about the solutions later on. Also, high poly sculpts can be a problem because of the poly count. So you're probably going to be okay doing some simple sculpts of basic objects but as soon as you get into that really fine detail, such as pores of the skin, stitches in leather, and small cracks in rocks and so forth, then you're going to have more difficulty. It's often the case when using textures to sculpt with that you need the resolution to be very high, so the poly count to be very high, and you'll want to avoid doing that. Another thing that you'll want to steer clear of are things like fluid systems and particle systems, so grass, smoke, explosions, and water. They take lots of processing power, and you'll just get very frustrated with the long waiting times for these to render and bake. Another thing that you might want to avoid is long animations which need detailed rendering. It's okay if you've got a very basic object that's really low poly and has small texture sizes or really basic textures, but anything a bit more advanced or if there's detailed lighting in the scene, particularly any reflections, then it's going to take a while to render and you're going to get frustrated. So what to focus on? The most important thing in my mind is good topology. Now, topology is the way the faces are linked together and good topology should be using the minimal amount of faces required to make a good looking model. If you do this, then you'll need less polygons and therefore your computer will run faster. Now, if that sounds a bit too advanced, then start out with just low poly modeling. Create simple models where you take a detailed shape and break it down into its basic elements. So in a very simplistic level, a person, can be broken down into cylinders, spheres, and cubes stacked on top of each other. And it's more about the relation between them and the proportions between them being right that gives the illusion that it's a person. And it's a really good skill to learn and it will help you when you come to the more complex things within the programs. So keeping the polygon count down, the face count, the vertex count down to as low as possible is going to be your major task. When it comes to texturing, try and use small texture sizes if you're using downloaded textures and not too much complexity if you're using procedural materials. Again, if you want to learn about these things, then do look at the links in the description and my playlist on this channel. Now, just to prove to you that you can do this and still have wonderful looking models, take a look at Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a way people can show off their models online in 3D. And the fact that it's running over the internet means that it's not taking up a lot of processing power. You can view a lot of these models on a basic mobile phone. Let's take a fairly basic model, such as this one here, by Paula Lucas. And if we take a look, it's actually very low poly, but it's got a lovely style, looks really effective, and looks great on a portfolio or in a game. The good thing about Sketchfab is as well, you can look at the model inspector and come across to the wireframe, and we can see the exact amount of polys used. And you can see this is a very low poly shape. 
Now these textures have a sort of hand painted look, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need artistic skill, you just need to understand how to use textures and unwrap them. Especially in this case because it's just using mainly gradient textures. So you can get some real great inspiration from Sketchfab and it gives you some guidance how to make those low poly objects look really great with good topology. It helps if you've got artistic skill. Let's take a look at this one from Saba Beatty and this looks absolutely fantastic. You can certainly see their artistic skill. Let's look at the model breakdown though in the model inspector and look at the wireframe. On first glance this is fairly detailed and it looks high poly but it is still running over the internet so you can go this high poly and still not see any performance issues and this is more about understanding topology as well as anatomy and facial structure combined with artistic skill you can produce wonderful works like this and it doesn't need a good computer this only has one base color as you can see there there's a few tiny post-processing filters here but it just uses that base color which is painted onto the object and you can do that with a very basic computer now it's also worth pointing out that the games industry have been using these techniques for years. They always have to be careful with the poly count, so they have to make sure that their objects don't have too many faces, and they have to be very careful with the textures that they're using to make sure they can pack all this detail into the games and make them look real, immersive, exciting, stylized, and so on. The mobile games industry in particular is doing this. If you see any 3D games, they have to work very hard to keep the polygon count down and most of the detail is in the painted textures. Have a look at my work for Atlas Empires, there's a playlist in the description. These are all very low poly objects with very low resolution textures so that they can work on a mobile phone and you don't need a powerful computer in order to create them. The main skills that I think you should be focusing on is your artistic skills and your creative skills. So it is a good idea to learn a bit of drawing and a bit about color theory and lighting techniques from the 2D art world that you can bring into your 3D art. But alongside that is those creative skills and being able to break down complex objects into simple forms. So low poly modeling and being able to cleverly mimic what we see in real life, but in really low poly shapes. And yes, you can still get into the industry with those skills, certainly the games industry. It's still very important to have low poly modeling skills. Artistic skills are highly regarded and very important. You may find it much tougher to get into the architectural visualization industry or simulations, engineering and those types of industries that require high poly objects or with hyper realism or even the motion graphics industry that often focuses on volumetrics and kind of fancy lighting techniques that take a lot of rendering time. So my final thoughts I would say there's lots you can do to get started to build up the fundamental skills. By building up these skills there may come a time where you can afford a faster machine and you'll find those skills that I've been telling you to steer clear of will be much easier to access with those fundamental skills. So yes, there are limitations, but you can still have fun and be creative with techniques like low poly work. Okay, so I hope that helps. Let me know about your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.